What's up, Kansas City? I'm Jasmine C. with Cascade Media Group, and today I have a special guest, Ms. Kim Jones, who is the owner of Kansas City Metropolitan Dance Theater, which is formerly known as Smith Sisters, that's located on 69th and Prospect. So, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, my name is Kimberlyn Jones, and I was born and raised here, not too far from here, and um, went born and raised in Catholic school right up the street, uh, St. Martin de Porres, and then I went to Bishop Hogan, graduated, went to the University of Missouri, came home and uh, with a business degree and a dance minor. And after that, I've just been here working a lot of corporate jobs, a lot of management jobs, owned a couple of businesses. Um, no one's here but my parents and I, and I have a brother that's an architect in Chicago. But when I got back from, from um, college, I just, Started a family, started um, the dance studio, um, worked in the corporate world, and just giving a lot back to the community. And that's really basically it. That's cool. So when did you become interested in dance? Well, like I said, I'm a native of Kansas City, and my kid, my parents were school teachers in the Kansas City School District for over 38 years. And a lot of school teachers lived over in the Sheridan Estates area that's not too far from here. And I lived next door to one of the original Smith sisters as a kid. And everyone on the block went to the dance studio. And I took piano lessons, classical <laughs> piano lessons. So I was the outcast on the, the block. And um, the Kay uh, Woods was the uh, one of the Smith sisters I lived next door to. She told my mother that she was taking me to dance mm -hmm. class because I was out in the yard turning flips and dancing and making up drill team steps and things with all the other kids. And she told my mom, you need to put her in dance class. So I had an agreement with my mother. If I continued my piano lesson, she let me take dance class. And I started Smith Sisters at about seven years old. So I'm guessing you like dance more than piano classes, or did you keep taking classes? I had to keep taking piano classes. She would have let me I any other take, way. I had to keep taking piano lessons and dance as well. That's cool. So what inspired you to actually take over the studio? Well, I um, when Kay recruited me as a little child, I just it was just in my spirit and my soul to dance. Of course, I was heavily influenced by them. And um, once I took dance lessons, I never stopped. They got me involved in a lot of community events. They sent me to other dance studios to um, train, which is Milla Marley. I went to Betty Tillotson, and I think she's still here, like she's 100 years old. Uh, the Kansas City uh, Ballet. But I still went back. My home was still Smith Sisters. And so I went to college got a dance minor and when I came back I taught for the Smith sisters. Well, by then they were getting older so we were taking a lot more responsibility and I was one of the students that grew up in the studio and then came back to give back and they passed away. One passed away in 2001 and a year later the other passed away and um, I always wanted to open up my own studio um, but I had allegiance to the Smith sisters and I never wanted to do anything to compete with them. But when they passed away, it was an idea to keep their content, keep their legacy going by keeping running their school. Well, the family started to run it and I'm not per se the family. And, um, you know, it ran for a few years, but after a few years after they passed away, um, it closed. And one day, I was driving down 71 Highway, and I saw some cars in the back of the parking lot, and kids were knocking on the door. You know, Smith Sisters was an icon in the community, and one of the only few black dance studios in the community. And I knew it was closed, and I saw these people knocking on the door trying to see what was going on. And I go, oh my God, you know? It just broke my heart to see that People, you don't have to advertise. It was closed, and people were still going to the studio trying to get dance, in, right. trying to get in. And I said that moment compelled me to say, I got to do something, and I have to do it there. And so during that time, I was having that emotional, you know, um, moment 
the owner of the building, Kay's husband is still living, called me and asked me if I'd like to have the studio and open it back up. Because I was the last man standing. A lot of people grew up in there and went and did their own thing and opened up their own studios and they've been very successful. They went off to New York and danced in different companies, but I was the last man standing when it closed. And he asked me if I'd like to open it. I said, yes. <laughs> it was just kind of that calling. Right. And um, when he offered me that opportunity to, to open the school back up, it was from then on, it was just on. <laughs> That's really cool. That's really interesting as well. And so at the studio, do you have like a lot of different age groups? Like what does the ages range from? We start at three, age three to 18, of course. 18 year olds are seniors in high school. They go off to college. And we just had our first uh, graduate this year. But I pretty much run it like Smith Sisters ran it because that's who I learned from. So our curriculum and our infrastructures ran a lot like Smith Sisters. I had to change the name because I'm not a Smith Sisters, but um, I wanted to encompass the entire community. But we still pay homage to the Smith Sisters. Um, you know, our tagline is continuing the legacy of Smith Sisters. And it was just important to know that they gave a lot to the community. I was a product of it, and I wanted to continue that you know, what they gave, because they were icon in the community. And what's really special about our school is that their granddaughter teaches in the school. And she started with me from day one when I told her, guess what I'm going to do, you know, in honor of your grandmother. And so she's been on board with me, and that's Toria Woods. We call her Angel, and she's been with me ever since day one. That's really cool. So how do you feel about how like dance studios and other recreational centers play a role in the community? I think they play a big, huge role, given that society has changed. Children now, they have access to so much fast food. And I know I'm kind of getting off the dance, <laughs> but my point is fitness, nutrition, activity, um, discipline, structure, a lot of those things have been removed with the fast food. You know, kids are, are growing more now and um, they are not as in shape as they used to be. They're not as active because now they have um, the computers and the internet and the games, the video games now that don't require physical activity. And so therefore, along with the fast food and not having to have physical activity to be entertained, they're gaining weight, they're not as in shape as a normal 8, 9, 10 year old child should be. Um, the internet is so, um, it, it, it is such a great resource and a great tool and it accesses children to so much these days but it's also damaging our children because there's a lot of things that are not censored that kids don't need access to but it stimulates them more and so um, and they've also taken the arts out of the schools. And so it's left up to people like myself to build the community centers, the dance centers, the art centers, the culture centers, to get the arts and the culture back into children because it's so important. I mean, it is pertinent to their development, you know, their creativity and stimu stimuli and and uh, physical activity and nutrition and fitness and structure and discipline and hard work. You, you just don't learn that on a computer or the internet. You definitely don't. And, and, and it's just, it, it, people don't understand. And you, you give a kid you know, an iPod or, or uh, whatever those iPads and games and sit them in the corner and they're done. You know, they got babysit, those are the babysitters now. And, and, and arts is just, you know, that's just a whole different segment on how arts help with, it is so functional in their lives and their development. So um, it is absolutely essential that um, we put, we keep, keep it in the community and put more of it in the community. It's like, it's great that you say that because I used to dance as well, like up from when I was three until like about 13. And so it did give, give me all of those things that you talked about. Like it showed me how to be disciplined. It showed me how to be structured and actually work hard for what I want to do. Because 
I love dance. I used to eat, breathe, sleep it. That was it. <laughs> but yeah, so it's great that we still have studios like yours where teenagers and youth can go. Yeah. So what are your like future goals for your studio? Well, um, we're just getting started. We've been seven years in the business and um, I think we just closed Smith Sisters. They only closed maybe two years. It was just one year before you asked me and then it took me a year to restructure and give it a makeover and we rehabbed it on the inside and things like that. But my ultimate goal is to build um, much like what Cicely Tyson has done. She's built a cultural center and my ultimate goal is not only to build a bigger dance studio, but actually build an urban culture center where we can pull in the, um, and, and our tagline is in the community, for the community, by the community. And what I mean by that is we take the artists out of the community, people who know and live the community, who are very talented people, and they, they give back to the community. So we get the people, the artists in the community, then we do it for the community, and it's in the community. Um, and so I'd like to get drama back in there, voice, uh, music lessons, whether it be drums, pianos, whatever it is that our artists can offer, visual um, art, and um, that way we have a community center where kids can come and pick and choose. You know, it's an umbrella of all the performing arts or visual arts, and then it, it would be like, um, what they call an incubator of all of our artists, community artists that can go under one center and kids, they may not want to do dance, but they might want to do piano, but when, they got, when they're surrounded by dance, they may discover, oh wow, I like how that hip hop's going, you know, and um, people who are doing dance may have an opportunity to learn how to do a, mu you know, play a musical instrument. I just think that the kids should um, have that that um, opportunity for them, and we don't have it in Kansas City. Right. So how can we actually get in contact with you for like enrollment right. and things like that? Well, we start enrollment August the 24th, 69, 6833 Prospect. We're still in the same location as Smith Sisters. The spirit is still there. And we start, we operate our classes from September 4th through June, no, September 7th through June 7th. So we actually operate during the regular school year. Our enrollment is 10 to 2, August Saturday, August 24th. We start classes September the 7th, and we run through June, and we uh, bring together our huge annual showcase. This year was at the Uptown Theater, and we will probably return to the Uptown Theater. And we take ages from 3 to 18. We do have a website, www.kcmetrodance.org. We also have a Facebook page, Kansas City Metropolitan Dance Theater, and you can contact me at 816-695-7737, seven days a week. Well, we want to thank Ms. Kim for being our special guest today. And you can check out the rest of our videos at whatsupkinscity.net and cascadesports.tv. And remember, stay jazzy. Hi, my name is Nelson. And my name is Mia. And, and we, we are CMG. CMG. If you would like to promote your business, goods, or services, check us out at whatsupkansas.net or cascadesports.tv. And remember, it pays to advertise.